<laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Patrick Curran, Chair of the Java Community Process Organization. I'm talking to you from Sao Paulo, Brazil, where I've been here for the last week or so talking to developers and to students and to academics about the Java Community Process and the work that we do and specifically about how Java is developed and the changes we've made in the last few years to make the whole process much more open and transparent so that everybody can participate. And I've been explaining this in presentations, I hope I got my point across, but this afternoon we're at a Hacker Garden event and uh, I'm here with Leonardo Lima who is the spec lead for JSR 363, the units of measurement JSR, and he did a kind of spontaneous show and tell with a group of people showing them how the work of the expert group is actually carried out and how they, from the outside, can see what's happening and, and even comment on it. And it occurred to me, the show and tell works better than the presentation, so I suggested we make this video. So, uh, Leonardo, why don't we start, perhaps maybe you should just say a little bit about the GSR, explain what, it, what its purpose is, what stage you're at in the development process, and then we can look at how people can actually see what you do. Hey, so I'm Leonardo Lima and I'm specially for GSR 363. We are in the way of standardizing how Java handles the units of measurement. So one of the issues that we have while developing embedded solutions is that we deal with the world and have to sense and these sensors, they deliver measurements and what normally happens for us is we have like a float or something like that, that just you have to document very well what this float means. It could be kilometers, it could be temperature, it could be whatever. And we want to prevent stuff like the mission Mars lander that we had a misfortune that a robot crashed because it was coded by different people that had different metric systems on them. So some with imperial units, other with metric systems. So we think this standardization is, is good for everybody from all fields of science. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if somebody is interested in seeing what you guys are up to, where do they start? They well, jcp.org? Yeah, they go to jcp.org, that's the homepage for every JSR, mm -hmm. and we can just search by its number or technology. But so uh, we know the number is 363, so just searching for JSR 363. Okay. You'll end on the homepage for JSR 363 Units of Measurement API. Mm -hmm. We are actually, we are a very new API, uh, JSR. We are we started in this March and we are approaching the early draft review uh, phase. Mm -hmm. So we, you can see here what's the current stage and how everything is being doing. And mm -hmm. you have the, some links that you can start and if somebody wants to know exactly what is happening here, mm -hmm. you can go inside these transparency links, mm -hmm. public communications, issue tracking. Mm -hmm. And also on this page, it's all the what the specification is all about. So a list group. of who's on the expert group and so uh, on. Yeah, so everybody who's there and what's the main, <coughs> who is, is the spec lead. So I co spec lead with uh, Bernard Kyle and Jemahi. And also there are some other people from other companies as well, like Otavio and Karen. Mm -hmm. And here you can see uh, companies that are supporting us, so mm -hmm. a lot of user groups and what all of this is all about. So we try to detail most of the inspiration from it. Mm -hmm. But the, the main action happens on the JSR pages, mm -hmm. which is on the uh, java.net. You can get from the link there, you get to the java.net project. Okay. Here you can see the source code repositories. So what you can, from here you can check either the API status and the reference implementation. So you can go to GitHub and download the code and s try to use it on your use case. And that's one of the things that we would like to know most as a spec lead. We want everybody to use the API and to report to us if it's usable or not, or if there's something that we should change mm -hmm. for their use case. Because even though we try to get as much as a broad uh, approach to this as possible, we, are, we tend to go to the places that we know. Also here you can go to the downloads, mm -hmm. to the downloads links, and here we sh we have some slides from our meetings, from our expert group meetings, mm -hmm. and also the current units of measurement specification. So okay. the work of the spec group is to not only provide code in an API, but also a spec specification document that should 
lead somebody reading it to get to the same point. So you can download from here and also we have a, a link to our Google Docs that can show you everything that we've been writing as soon as we write it. So it's a live version from editing. So most of the discussion happens on the mailing lists. Yeah. Real hot discussions uh, starting from August. So with long threads and discussion going back and forth. And I think that's the most interesting thing about the standards is that we try to accommodate everybody right. and discussing back and forth. That's why it takes a long time. And right? that's why it takes a long time. Because you, you've got to kind of reach an agreement. Yeah. Uh, like, to, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you can see it from here. And if you are a subscriber to the middle list, you can just ask to be subscribed and we allow it. You can see some uh, discussions that we have with, for example, long uh, sub-proposal to this and we are trying to, for example, in this case we had a problem that we thought maybe we have to talk with the JDK guys, so we have a discussion how oh, should we send this email in this way or in that way and go back and forth. Okay. But, but everything that you guys discuss is public. Right? Yes, everything. Uh, so that mail thread that I showed to you, it's here. So one yeah. of the proposals and progress towards ADR. Okay. Everything is you can you can read from here. There's no backroom co uh, conversations. Mm. There's nothing else but here. Can people write to this? Mailing list. I mean, if people want to give you feedback, how do they do that? Yeah, the preferred way would be to file an issue. So okay. we have the issue tracking here as well. Yeah. So if they find a problem, they should open an issue against some part, specific part of, part of the code. So for example, right today, I, I was in this hacking garden, I was compiling stuff and I found out that there was a problem mm -hmm. and I just uh, create a new issue here and then you just say, ah, I have a problem with this and that. So, And it's good here because you can have comments and people can follow these even they don't even if they don't subscribe to the mailing list they can subscribe to the specific issue they created yeah, nice. and it's very really accessible and all work that we do for ri is mm -hmm. basically here on the issues as well so mm -hmm. and besides that what we've been doing here is just we go to github so the ri we have the source code that you can browse and if you don't want to download you can just read it and check what's here and what is missing or not to so all the projects and see all the commits are like referencing some issues okay. because they are okay. fixing okay. some specific yeah. problem and we also were we were today we were coding and so this is there I, I can compile these against the java and the new java and me source mm -hmm. because because it uses local and we don't have that on java and me so i find a new issue so people can fix it and that's the kind of stuff that we want to people, even though they are not expert or they think they don't know enough, right. they just download the code, try to compile, try to use it, mm -hmm. write some use cases. And if they can't, it's good enough. If they just file an issue, I can't get it working yeah. at all. Uh, please help me. And, and then we can draw new mm -hmm. uh, diagrams or create new documentation so they can get up working. So right. it's really um, the way that we are doing this in the Hacking Garden, for example, we, we do that. Okay. So, um, Leonardo, you've been showing us code and stuff, um, which is great. I mean, obviously, it's, it's good that the code is publicly accessible and that people can get at it. But some things that people have said to me sometimes is they feel, maybe it's just because we use the word expert, but they sometimes think, well, I'm not an expert, so I'm not a super programmer, so maybe there's nothing I can do to help. So what sort of things are you looking for people to do? In what kind of ways can people get involved? Okay, so there are many ways besides not code is just one end of it. Mm -hmm. So in the end, like actually in the beginning, we start with the spec document. Mm -hmm. So in the, if you are a complete beginner on on Java, but if you can read the, the spec document and make sense of it and just check it out, does it make sense to you? What we are proposing makes sense to mm -hmm. you as in your use cases? That's a very good uh, input for, to us. Mm -hmm. And as we are, we are not English people. So I am Brazilian. The other spec lead is German. The other one is French. So mm -hmm. English is not our first language. So if we could just proofread it, so that's another yeah, way to, right. to, to okay. implement as well. Mm -hmm. And eventually, we're going to have to have tests to mm -hmm. implement to make sure that the implementations bind correctly to the API. Mm -hmm. So and these are like really simple tests yeah. and I think everybody can write, if they can write Java, they can write tests okay. against them. 
and we are uh, we are very early on the specification but soon enough we are going to have binaries available on maven available on public websites available also as in our web page yeah. in the download we have just ticked the jar mm -hmm. and try to write a 10 line program to convert kilometers to miles for example mm -hmm. just to make use of the api and see it's usable it's good or no it's cumbersome it has too many classes or it's too little classes yeah okay these are very simple they don't require any expertise on yeah. this specific topic it just requires knowledge of java so. yeah okay and i guess we want to make the point that you know if people look at this and say you know this doesn't seem right to me or i can't understand it i don't necessarily mean they're wrong yeah right yeah it's, yeah. It, it's, it's your <laughs> so job our job is to, to explain. produce something yeah. that is easily understandable by the average java developer yes not by the experts and yeah. so if they can't understand it they shouldn't be afraid to tell you. Totally right. agree. I totally agree. And if there's some pr problem, as I said, file an issue saying this piece of line, this piece of text here, yeah. they don't make sense, yeah. or I can't understand any of these. And yeah. what what do you mean? And maybe you have to rewrite stuff. Yeah. So okay. yes, and we 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 actually hope that kind of input comes because otherwise you're just writing and we understand it, but we don't know if the public is yeah, understand right. it. Once you understand it, then uh, we'd like you to produce this information to others, so your oh, yeah. co-workers, to your user group, if you go to one, make it know in the event or uh, any way that people, you can reach other people and say, mm -hmm. so this, there is this new API that does this and that, and it's really useful for these use cases, and this knowledge spreading is very mm -hmm. good. So there's another way to help as well. Okay. All right, this is good. So the whole point of the changes we've been making over the last few years is to enable the average developer to see what we're doing and to participate in what we're doing. And maybe that's another thing that I could say is, if you try to participate and you find it difficult, tell us that too. <laughs> yeah. you know, you may were trying to debug the, the, the homepage a few minutes ago yes. and I said, oh, it's not that easy to get to this and maybe we should change that link to whatever. So, you know, again, if we don't make it easy for you, it's not because you're stupid, it's because we made a mistake. Yes. The goal is that the average developer, who after all, is the, they're the guys we're writing this stuff for. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. They're the, the, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of developers are the guys who are going to be using this, and we want to make it as easy as possible to do so, and we want to get their real-world feedback before we freeze the spec. Yes. Because then after we release it, it then it's, it's very hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so thanks Leonardo, you've shown us a lot of stuff there uh, and I think this is a really good practical example of the kind of information that we're trying to publish to people and the kind of ways that we want them to, uh, to help us to, to make Java better and to create the future versions of Java. So um, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? And on the main jcp.org page, you, there's a link here, contact us. They can just get the <coughs> mails for the PMO, so they can reach you and the other people that run the GCP mm -hmm. for general questions. So everything from I can't find this a specific GSR yeah. to I want to join something and how do I do that. Yeah. So they can just uh, send an email. It's very simple. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much and thank good, you. good luck with uh, with the JSR. Yeah, thank you very much. to the early draft review. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.